Welcome to the Archive for Sexology. Among many other things, we also offer a free online curriculum in sexual health. I am its author, Erwin Haberley. The curriculum consists of six courses, six semesters, and can be studied not only at home, but also in the classroom. Right now, I would like to introduce you to a section in our second course, human reproduction and talk about the Hippocratic Oath. In discussions about health issues, one often hears about a Hippocratic Oath, but not many people know exactly what it means. They may suspect that it is some sort of medical oath, although they are not sure about the details. They may also realize that the oath has some ancient origin, but few people have actually read the original. Most also do not know if it is still being sworn by our modern doctors. Some believe that it is, but others dispute that. Still others believe that all doctors today, at least in the Western world, must swear some updated version of the Hippocratic Oath before they are allowed to practice. So, what are the facts? The original oath was a special oath sworn by ancient Greek physicians, and it is said to have originated with Hippocrates, the father of Western medicine, who lived about 2,500 years ago. In any case, as we shall see, the oath reflects the customs and concerns of ancient Greece, and it is therefore not surprising that many passages have no relevance for us today. Nevertheless, it is an interesting document for many reasons. I would like to discuss some of them here, and I will therefore now present you with an English translation of the original text. So. Let's now look at the first part of the oath. The Hippocratic Oath. I swear by Apollo the physician, by Esculapius, Hygieia and Panacea, and I call as my witnesses all gods and goddesses, that I will keep the following oath according to my ability and judgment. I will respect my master and teacher just as much as I respect my parents, and I will share my life with him and pay him everything that I owe him and he needs. I will consider his sons as my own brothers and teach them this art if they so desire, without fee or contract. I will teach this art also to my sons and the sons of the master who taught me and to the disciples who have enrolled themselves and have agreed to the rules of the profession. But I will teach it to none other. As you can see, the oath is above all a professional oath designed to accomplish two goals. First, it creates a special bond between the disciple and master by obliging the future physician to guarantee the lifelong financial support of his teacher and to treat his family as if it were his own. In particular, he swears to teach not only his own sons, but also the sons of his master. Please note here that there is no mention of teaching any daughters. Medicine was strictly a male profession. Second, the oath taker is obliged to keep his medical knowledge within his profession and to teach it to none other. Thus he swears to keep the science and art of medicine close to outsiders and to preserve it for a special guild of practitioners. So much for the very important economic aspect of the oath. After this, we come to the moral aspects, and these are the ones that are still being debated today. The Hippocratic Oath, Part 2 I will prescribe what is necessary for the good of my patients according to my ability and my judgment, and I will never do harm to anyone. I will not prescribe a deadly drug to anyone, even if asked 
nor will I give advice which may cause someone's death. I will not give a woman the means for an abortion. I will preserve the purity of my life and my art. I will not use a knife even on patients who suffer from stone, but will leave this operation to surgical specialists. I will enter every house only for the good of my patients and never with the intention to harm anyone. I will not seduce or have sexual contact with the female or male household members, whether they are free or slaves. Whatever secrets I see or hear, professionally or privately, I will keep secret and tell no one. If I keep this oath faithfully, may I prosper in my life and my art, respected by all men for all time. But if I transgress or violate it, may the opposite happen to me. As I said, the original Hippocratic Oath is a very interesting document for several reasons. For example, one text passage makes clear that the physicians of that time did not perform surgery, but left that task to other specialists. They also refused to help in torturing or killing people, or even to assist in suicides. One revealing passage often quoted today is this, I will not give a woman the means for an abortion. This sentence is revealing for what it implies. After all, the fact that such an oath was deemed necessary is proof enough that abortions were common in ancient Greece and that its author tried to prevent at least the physicians from participating in them. But who was the author? Modern historical research has shown that it was not Hippocrates because we now know that the physicians of his school did help their female patients with abortions. Today the oath is attributed to some older school, possibly that of the philosopher Pythagoras, which had a strong religious orientation. Most modern versions of the Hippocratic Oath, if it is taken at all, no longer mention abortions which are now routinely performed by many doctors in many countries. As a matter of fact, the original ancient Greek oath has long been discarded everywhere. Modern medical schools now either offer some updated, modernized version or have dropped it altogether. Another very revealing passage in the original text gives us an idea why some modern medical schools might find it too embarrassing to have it read aloud in a public or even private ceremony. The passage says, I will enter every house only for the good of my patients. I will not seduce or have sexual contact with the female or male household members whether they are free or slaves. It is not the mention of slaves that may nowadays bother people. No, the Hippocratic Oath reveals here something else. The ancient Greek physicians, who we remember were always male, and most often husbands and fathers, were obviously tempted to seduce not only their female but also their male patients. That's why they had to swear I will not seduce or have sexual contact with the female or male household members. This casts an interesting light on the sexual behavior of the ancient Greeks, who took a man's sexual interest in other males for granted, even if he had a wife and a family. Outside the doctor-patient relationship, the doctor's bisexual interests were obviously assumed as a matter of course. But when it came to his patients and the households, he had to practice sexual abstinence from both heterosexual and homosexual contact. We can see why modern physicians would feel uncomfortable swearing an official oath that assumes the erotic interest in both sexes. 
that rather dispense with the whole ceremony. Indeed, in practical terms, the Hippocratic Oath has now become obsolete. Many helping professions dealing with patients and therapy clients have replaced the oath with written, specific and often very detailed codes of ethics. Among many other things, they also prohibit sexual contact between therapist and patient or client, but make no assumptions about anybody's sexual orientation. These special codes of ethics now regulate the different professions and the practitioners gladly subscribe to them. For more on the ethical issues surrounding human reproduction, see our course on our website.